More look like titty tassels right here. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, Graham's like, no, that's a good idea. She's like, that's, that's what they are, actually. <laughs> I've never heard of that made out of gourds, but yeah. Hey, why not? Exactly. I mean, you, it's an earth, that's a true earth mama right there. That's right. I got only 25 gourd plants in the whole garden. This is all I have for gourd you plants. You only yeah. have 25, There's, but they they fill out nicely. It's the, like a oh dog on a bed. It just it sprawls. It sprawls out, and they, you have no more bed left. Right. That's, they, that's what basically they do. what these they, gourds are doing. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And this year, because of all the rain, I think I have fewer fruit setting. But I've got the ones that are here are just gorgeous. Check out these Indonesian bottle gourds. I, I see one okay. you know, poking like, up. Yeah, there's a whole nest of them. Here, yeah. watch your step, of course, because okay. there's little baby gourds oh, yeah, everywhere. yeah, gourds everywhere. But look at this thing. It's a monster. I've never seen one that big. I'm very excited. And then there's like other, like just about equally big ones. Here oh yeah, you can see them all they're like hiding the, out. Yeah. Oh, and that one. That one's Oh yeah, that's a that looks like a pregnant one. mama. It's like the year of the Indonesian bottle. So Lord. maybe they liked the rain in this instance. I mean, Who I knows? think so. Right, I think so. Uh, but when yeah. are these when are these ready to pick actually? And how do you know when they're ready so to pick? So I wait because if I picked it now, it's a big glorious gourd, right? You might think I could just pick it right now. It wouldn't dry right. They 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 get to be a full size three or four weeks or so after the flower was pollinated pretty quickly, but then they need that extra month on the vine at least, a month to two months to get that hard shell. So, I mean, they have like a 110 day season. Hmm. So they were really pushing the envelope a little bit in upstate New York. Yeah. So I leave all the gourds on the vine until the vine is dead in October. Have you been pushing the boundaries a little bit with um the, you know, I feel like some people are saying, hey, we've had an extended growing season. It's getting warmer earlier. I have, I have. I've tried direct seeding some, you know, I, I, we're not quite there yet, but we start plants indoors in pots in April under lights. So that's, okay. yeah. And yeah. then, like I said, leave them on the vine. And also we, we feed them very heavily. We don't, don't uh, fertilize during the year, but I give each plant two wheelbarrows of composted manure. I mean, we just are really giving them what they need. And space-wise, too, I mean, they get, they sprawl, so. Um. I think they're asking for more acreage, actually. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. Hey, you know, more it's acreage. just, uh, I'll petition yeah. my neighbors about that. <laughs> so yeah, watch your step on the way out. Okay. Because there's baby gourds everywhere. <laughs> so is that one it, of the ones that you plant um, Religiously, like the, the Indonesian? Indonesian? No, not necessarily. No. We just kind of uh, brought it back recently. But on the trellis here, I like to plant in general smaller ones, but they don't. It doesn't always turn out that way. So right. this variety here is called small kettle, and um, it's going to actually get to be about twice that size. What does the large kettle look like? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't. Uh, these are not my own seeds, although I am saving seeds, doing the whole isolating and yeah. hand pollinating. We hand pollinate here because uh, there are not that many um, nighttime pollinators. There's not enough to really get you a good crop. Interesting. So, and it, usually the moths are pollinating The moths night? pollinate, the, the cucumber beetles eat the pollen and oh. they're shiny so, it's, so they're not good pollinators. Yeah. And there is actually something called a gourd bee that, that buzzes around in nighttime, but we don't have it here. Okay. So are they, uh, just to understand, so are they flowering at night primarily? Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. I skipped that part. Yeah. Yeah. So gourds are the only member of the cucurbits that have the little white flowers that bloom at night. All mm. the others have the big yellow flowers. They bloom yeah. all day long. Gourd flowers get one night only, and they're these little white flowers. One night only. One <laughs> night. That song just jumped so, in my head. <laughs> so it's about the most romantic thing. Every night between 9 and 11, Otto and I are out here with our headlamps, and we're going from the males to the females, and we're doing the pollination thing. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW. My goodness. We're getting better yield than we ever did before. Yeah. And um, not only that, but the gourds are more shapely because I think it's because they're full of seeds. You know yeah. I mean? Are you using like a little paintbrush or well, how we are you were. doing it? We used okay. to use a little paintbrush 
And, uh, you know, I posted a, a question to try to, try to survey the, the people in the Gourd Society, which, which method do you prefer, just dusting the male over the female or the paintbrush method? But I, now, these days, we're on the, just, you just dust the male over the female. Hmm. Okay, so just take one, fla like one part of the flower and then mm -hmm. put it on another. And all okay. that pollen just sifts over yeah. the, the pistil on the female, and yeah, it's... I yeah. guess you gotta pretend to be like one big, messy bumblebee and just yeah. go... Yeah, <laughs> we're out here with a head lamps on and yeah. the ladders and we're up there pollinating and the moths are going like this. and yeah it's just it's very it's very jungly and exciting here oh, it's so much cool it's like 10 degrees cooler under here than it is out there <laughs> aren't these just lovely they are they're Can you so see cute. how fuzzy they are and they look like the little belt like belly button fuzz you know it, it's like that yeah almost like a peach or something yeah so your word for the day the name for a small fruit of a cucurbit plant do you know this no i don't peepo a peepo. P-E-P-O. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So aren't these, aren't these guys nice? Isn't that just the sweetest little gourd? You could make a nightlight out of a gourd like that, or else you could wait for it to get a bit bigger. Well, you have to wait. You have to yeah. be full size. Right. And, and then I'm thinking like... Otherwise what, they don't dry, you're saying? They properly? won't. They'll shrivel, okay. they'll rot. But if they're, they have to be really mature to get that hard shell. Yeah. Well, but, sometimes when you pull a gourd, even when it's full, uh, it looks like it's going to rot, right? But it's not oh, really. Oh, yeah, I yeah. can show you that in the yeah. shed. This is, one, this is like the number one thing that I want everybody who visits Gordlandia to know. The gourds go through a very awkward phase. Here, I gotta show you this. Okay. I'll show you this. <laughs> I almost hit Unless my head on that gourd. That gourd oh, almost knocked me out. That robin is nesting up here. Oh. Every night when we're pollinating, it glares at me. Well, she has a worm I know, in her she mouth, has a worm, so. she has babies. But She's gotta. There's gourds. Okay, so this is the awkward. This is where we, yeah, these are the gourds in the awkward phase. Put them in here only to keep the rodents out. You don't have to put them in a shed. Yeah. They can actually, people who grow lots of gourds, they leave them out in the field and they just harvest them when they're light. It's so much easier. This is where yeah. gourds come to dry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they look really nasty. You can understand yeah. why people would throw them away. Right. Don't throw them away. Mm -hmm. They're fine. As long as you can't put your finger through it, it, it's good. So it's just this, this outer, just really flaky, just the skin, not mm -hmm. the shell, that gets really moldy. And that's what you wash off. I use these things. Okay, so and I soak it, which is tricky because mm -hmm. it floats, right? <laughs> but it's, uh, um, I've got methods to basically trap them in the water. And then after it's been soaking for several hours, you can just use one of this. And then all that skin comes off and where the mold was, you get beautiful markings on the board. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this looks so Rubenesque. I know, isn't that so cool? That is a Mexican bottle gourd. Mm. This one's a Copper Canyon Canteen. This one even has a place where you could you could grip it. Yeah, <laughs> you could. So you can tell that that one that one um, grew on the trellis. One like this grew on the ground. Just because one, it's hung over yeah, like this. Yeah, this this one grew on the trellis, so the weight of the gourd pulls, pulls it, it down straight. and straight. So yeah. that'll make a really cool lamp. Yeah, right. You can picture that. These are banana gourds down here. And then this is the one that I'm I'm working on myself. This is like I, I I got this out of a mystery gourd, planted a seed four years ago, and I loved the results so much that I've been planting it year after year and choosing the one that I like best. And I'm calling it an umbilical gourd <laughs> because I was a midwife and because that's exactly what what the Audi looks like. And the, and that's growing on the ground then. This that one grew on the ground. Little, yeah. And that's what's growing right here too. So okay. this is from last year. And this is a mystery gourd. It doesn't have a name. It's an umbilical gourd. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's got a string around it because not only was it hand pollinated, but the flowers were isolated before, um, before it bloomed and afterwards to prevent cross pollination. Okay, so you put like some kind of bag a over it or bag a mesh bag. The, okay. The male and female flowers both. Right. To prevent cross pollination. Right. Because so they you want purity so easily. Yeah. Um, have you done any kind of cross pollination just to see what happens? Yes, I have. I'm, I'm just, I'm just dipping my toes in that just this year, and um, so far I'm not completely satisfied. With it. But I think yeah. it's really more because of the, the, the weather, which has been a little tricky for getting fruit to set. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have a ton of gourds drying here. Is this from last year? Last year. Wow. And so actually, and there's on this side too, and uh, we've already washed you know, a, a good chunk of them, but 
It's a big job in the summertime to wash all the gourds. Oh, I can only imagine. This is a Hawaiian dance mask. This one we did not grow here. We also, so I grow the gourds that I can't find easily elsewhere. Hmm. I get uh, Martin House gourds and Cannonball gourds. They grow them galore down in Pennsylvania, the Amish gourd farmers. Mm. And uh, yeah, and even if I grew only cannonball gourds at Gourdlandia, I wouldn't have enough. Yeah. So, so I might as well just get them from the Amish gourd farmers. And we were there Amazing. down in Pennsylvania. Oh um, my God. I know, isn't that something? This was the only gourd that this plant, the plant made. And we, we uh, so, so we were there on the first day of their harvest in March and it was, you know, the draft horses and the little Amish kids running around. It was so much fun. And Otto found this one and we just had to bring it home. Oh my gosh, that's like, it dwarfs you. I know. <laughs> Probably be a lantern of some sort, like a, yeah, like a chandelier. Or like your best friend. Or just like know? my best friend. is definitely going to make a showing in the Ithaca Festival Parade, for sure. <laughs> year. <laughs> I mean, give that guy some legs and hands and <laughs> you got yourself a, I do, a buddy. I do have a plan because people look for me in the parade, uh, look for the gourds in the parade now. And I've got a plan where the gourds are going to be doing like the Dairy Queen wave. <laughs> <laughs> the Dairy Queen wave? I thought that was the Beauty Queen wave. Yeah. Dairy Queen either, either one. <laughs> I want to see the rest that you have growing. These are banana gourds. I make Christmas ornaments out of those. That's cool. Christmas, and these ones are called Sonari. So I mean, you must have to like look at the shape and just be like, what, honestly, what can I do? Sometimes it's like that, like, like, yeah. but mostly, like, I just love making lamps. Lamps are my very favorite thing. So you know, some people say, oh, you know, you just let the gourd speak to you. Mm -hmm. My my perspective is kind of like, where's where is there a lamp? So, mm. See the lamp? Mm -hmm. yeah, see. So. <laughs> Sandra, what do you see? when you see these things? Infinite. Infinite, infinite possibilities. Infinite, infinite possibilities. possibilities. Well, see, that's the thing. Nowadays, people, when people think about gourds, they think birdhouses. Yeah. yeah that's, it's, it's very, very limited. But yeah. this is a South Sea Island dipper for a reason, and that's an Indonesian bottle. Yeah, that's I mean, exactly. I was like, this is this is definitely spoon material. Like, you even, yeah. Gourds and people go back. Yeah. As far back as dogs and people. Like twenty five thousand years. Like yeah. as soon as we started um, like cultivating grains and needing a place to put them is is what people conjecture. Who knows for sure? Yeah. Right? But the, um, it's about the time that that we discovered gourds. Well, you did mention the uh, the uh, birdhouse though, and I was reading about because we were installing a purple martin house, and we're like, well, how did per like purple martins almost exclusively live in man made? houses now right and I was like well, well how did that so there is some kind of theory out there I don't know this this is probably not corroborated but they said well probably American Indians had started using gourds as gourd houses as you know heard, you yeah. know that type of thing and I was like that's fascinating to me because that is some kind of like you know cultural interaction with like our wildlife and then right where the bird now has evolved to the point where it only wants Man-made houses. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. And, and what I heard was it was to keep the mosquito population down. Which so, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So there's a gourd. I don't have any here, but it's li like this, but it's more like a pear shape. It's called, it's, that's what its name is, is a Martin house gourd. Yeah. 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 yeah 25,000 years plus or minus. What sure. about this guy who's like, like twisty? Oh, so over. the name of this variety? Extra long handled dipper. <laughs> That's what it's called. That's a so strange dipper, though. This one has already been washed. This one yeah. grew on the ground, so it takes takes you know whatever uh, forces form the vine. And shape, yeah. But this these dippers grew on the trellis. You know, the ones with the long handle. So the okay, weight so of the ball just pulls it straight. Where yeah. do you find your gourd varieties that you want to use? That you want well, to grow. There, you know what? I'm glad you asked that because on my website, mm -hmm. gourdlandia.com, there's a page called Growing Gourds, and um, there's links to where I get. So the big seed suppliers, they have a very limited, like all they sell is like goose gourds and apple gourds and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But if you can choose from two or three dozen varieties, these places that are they're listed on that that website. Plus, I do a free seed giveaway mm -hmm. every spring. And if people sign my for my newsletter, I can let them know about my. And I've got like 
eight different varieties to choose from, but they're all free and they're, they're the ones that I've isolated and hand pollinated. That's amazing. So I, I saw that on your website that you could send a self-addressed stamp envelope. And exactly. You get a, yeah. couple, a couple of two to three different kinds of varieties. Yep. Amazing. It's fun. And, and um, are there any ones that you like wish you could grow, but they just wouldn't work here? There is one called an, um, what was that one called? Shoot. Oh man, the camera's going. Uh, green drum. Green drum. I tried year after year to get the green. It's an African kind that's really thick, and I just couldn't get it to shoot. Does it become like a drum? Well, Is I it mean, resonant like a drum? It, but yeah, yeah, I mean, any gourd. You know, yeah. did you know banjos started out as gourds? Like, a lot of musical instruments started out as gourds. Yeah. They're great resonators. <laughs> Are, are these, so, are any of these actually edible? Are they kind of more for craft? All right, all right. Now you've asked the question. <laughs> the question, is, are they edible? Well, yes. When they're little, they're edible. They're, they're bitter. But I always say, when people ask that question, I say, you know, you got the whole cucurbit family, not to mention all of the other plants, right? You got the watermelon and the cucumber, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You got one that you can make a lamp out of. <laughs> one. Okay, yes, you can eat them. Yeah. But why would you? <laughs> she, she can't eat her own babies <laughs> that she's pollinated herself. <laughs> With a finger at night? <laughs> They're bitter. They're bitter. I, I tried. I tried to but eat them. But most of our like, food started off as a little bitter, you know? Right. We have this they distaste for bitter. Like, but. I just, there's just something fundamentally wrong with yeah. eating a gourd. Watch your stuff. <laughs> and you have, only have 25 plants, you said, here. 25 plants? My gosh. Of course, that's not counting the weeds. <laughs> now, if you only had one, would it take over everything? No. Okay. I so. mean, we actually trim them a bit. You're, if you If you prune the vines... Uh, you prune the leader vine, it's got a lot of male flowers, then you get more females on the laterals. Right. This one is called, uh, that's the Mexican, you've seen that. That's mm -hmm. the Mexican um, water bottle. And the one up there is going to look different because it's trapped up there. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, um, you know, here you have this like trellis and you have like this kind of cattle wire type stuff. And uh -huh. these, uh, yeah. uh, is, do they prefer to grow up? Is it because like... They get all mildewy. Do they need airflow, or is it no, just I about mean, giving them more the surface area? The, the ones on the ground grow really well too. Uh, you can grow them either way. I just like to grow them on the trellis because it's just so nice to have the. I mean, you do get less bug damage, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to worry about the bugs quite so much, and they're so shapely. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they're free of of blemishes. So it's it's fun to grow the smaller ones on the trellis. But if you don't have a trellis. You, you can just grow them on the flat of the ground, or you can put some old wooden ladder or a couple of pallets or something if you want to have something for them to play on. They're like little goats, you know, it's just have a little gourd playground. Here, these guys here, this one, this variety is called Powderhorn. I am totally seeing lamp material here. <laughs> I, I think you, this, you air towards lamp. I air, yeah, I default think, is yeah, how to make yeah. a lamp. Yeah. Um, but I can, can, you can imagine like this one with one of those dark green ones as but, and a what shade. Is, what is the dark green one? It almost has like a little watermelon look to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did, wait, did we meet this one already No, over there? you didn't meet this one. They think the tag says, uh, very nice thick gourd on it. That's what I, <laughs> so every year I just plant a few mysteries that are like, I'm not sure what I'm going to get, but yeah. I, really, I got a gourd from somewhere. And I love it, and I have to try it. Now, I might plant a, a seed from a gourd that's like a little squatty one and get something that looks like a cucumber because they cross-pollinate so much. Mm. But if there's some quality that I really love about a gourd, sometimes I'll just, just plant a seed just to try it. And that's why the tag on this one says, very nice thick gourd. We'll see. We'll see if it's a very nice thick gourd <laughs> next spring. <laughs> Well, I guess we should uh, head in and see some of the crafts that you're doing. Sure.
You had mentioned that these start to look more robust a little later in August, but is August kind of their peak gourd season? I would say in terms of like them being beautiful on the in the trellis, that's 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 a good time to visit. Yeah. August and September. Nice. The the vines definitely are already showing signs of aging, right? But and the they'll, the vines start looking sad towards the end of August. And here's some of the white flowers, right? So that's a male, it's standing up on a tall stalk and it's got no fruit behind it. Right. And the female, oh, here we go. That's, uh, it's got a shorter stalk yep. and it's got that embryonic little, that's, an Af that's a Hawaiian dance mask baby. And that's so you can see. Are there any companion plants that you uh, like to plant with your gourds or is it just all gourds all the time? Well, that's pretty much what I plant, all gourds all the time. Um, you know, I've had several different plants suggested to me for in terms of, of um, cucumber beetle control, but uh, none of them seem to, the gourds just crawl over everything. They take over, it's, it's hard to have companion plants. Right, the and gourds. then also, I mean, you mentioned the cucumber beetle a couple times now. Is that the main pest, or That's do you get? That's my main pest. Okay. Other people have other other bugs, and you know, I mean, here in Ithaca, I've consulted with so many different uh, cucurbit and cucumber beetle experts, actually. That, um, but and and ba basically, the bottom line is, it's hard to control them organically, which is what I want to do. Right. And so we end up um, mostly just hand picking them. This year, for some reason, it's not been nearly. Last year, we would go out with a yogurt container at night, right? Hold the yogurt container under the flowers because that's where they're congregating, having this big cucumber beetle party and the flowers. So we're out here with the, the headlamps at 10 o'clock at night, knocking 20 cucumber beetles off of one flower. Into, yeah. And we would come like with an inch of cucumber beetle. <sighs> Ugh. So um, uh, this this year, like that was last night's harvest. Of oh, that's nothing. It's nothing. That's because you, mass the mass you massacred their entire family I last that. year. I mean, I'm, I mean, <laughs> we've been we've I been mean, trying you have for so long. Created a cucumber beetle garden out here. I've got the ode to the cucumber beetle. That's a good one. And then I've got a uh, cucumber beetle signage. I okay, so like no trespassing signs. Yeah, they, it, and uh, you know, really. Uh, there's there aren't good cucumber beetle traps. There's yeah. no, the pheromones like that they have aren't aren't really. This is not available and they don't work. The ones that they use in research, I've tried a lot of different things. Yeah. So far, hand picking is the thing. vacuuming. No, that just destroys the flowers. I mean, people do crazy things for yeah. the cucumber beetles. But yeah. Here's the thing. It's like this thing with me and the cucumber beetles, right? It's like they're my pest, and it's like I'm out to get them. The truth of the matter is. Like they don't really cause that much damage. And other um, cucurbits, they can transmit that bacterial wilt. Right. I think it's because the the uh, this, the gourd plants have a um, like a solid stem. It's not hollow, so they don't they don't seem to transmit that bacterial wilt as much. They're Are they really, just really concentrating though primarily on the flowers and the pollen? They're or? on the flowers and the pollens and they're, uh, you know, they're 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 not treating the plant nicely. But I'm still getting a good crop. Yeah. Yeah, and the spotted ones are worse. So far, I'm not seeing very many spotted. There's a striped and a spotted cucumber yeah, beetles. Yeah, I'm more familiar with the striped ones. Right, that's yeah. what we mostly see here. Yeah. But um, in the, this, at about this time of year, we start to see the spotted and they can, they can definitely like scar up the fruit. Mm. But then, you know, you just work that into your artwork, right? So, and here's some of your uh, ornaments, right? I've just been playing with color lately. Because if you look in my shop, like everything is brown, 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 brown. The reason for that is I feel like it doesn't interfere with the glorious shape of the gourd. Like mostly I stay away from color because like the gourds are just so amazing. Well, it's just, also brown just feels like a more neutral tone. So it kind of works. It kind of goes with them yeah. and it doesn't detract from the shape. There's so much whimsy to them. Right. <laughs> every now and then I do play with color just for fun. I, 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 uh, I see this as like a little fairy land. Like you could see it in like a little, little fairy gardens and everything. Although you'd probably be like, no, I could see it in my house, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it just has a sense of whimsy that you yeah. just like associate yeah. with it. This is exquisite though. Look at this, uh, look at this little 
It almost looks like a musical instrument in a way. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, that's a, just I think of it like for dried flowers or yeah. something like that. So I make a lot of these bowls. This would be out of a Martin House gourd, mm -hmm. bowl with a pine needle rim. It's one of the classes I do. And then you have um, the, the tops of the gourds, and I turn those into night lights. <laughs> and nowadays, because the night lights are so popular, and I don't make that many bowls, so yeah. I get so I have to buy tops from people who make bowls. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Because everybody wants the night because light, people want unless the night people light. want the bowl. See, I, I yeah. like the bowl. Yeah. You, you laughed at the night light. You're like, that's cute. <laughs> this is a great like... Gourd 101 project. <laughs> a little purse, you know. <laughs> it's a little, I, I fill it up with cookies and bring it to a potluck. Oh my gosh, you fill, well, that's just decadent. That, that's decadent. <laughs> All of these look like my father. <laughs> There's another one in there that looks just like him. And then here is a, a clock. So I like it because you take this kind of really biological, like plant matter, and you turn it into something mechanical. So it kind of, functional. You know, functional I love and yeah, that to keep things functional as much as possible. I mean, I do do go to like Christmas ornaments, and they have a function. They're Christmas ornaments. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, I like the idea, you know, like, like I was saying, gourds have, people and gourds have been going together and people have been using them for vessels and all kinds of things for so long. And um, so I, I really like the, to keep it functional. Were you an artist or a gourd grower first? I was a midwife. Did you I were a you? midwife. You had mentioned mid, yeah, that yeah, you were a midwife. Yeah, I was a midwife for 25 years, 1100 something uh, babies, like a, a lot of babies, and I loved doing that. And I just, um, I just really wanted to get art back into my life, like I, like I had as a kid, you know. Yeah. And uh, and we, so I would have to say we grew, we grew gourds before I started crafting them. We met a gourd by the side of the road, that a guy had like a half a dozen gourds out by the road, and we had to stop because it was like so intriguing. We stopped to see what was there and we bought a gourd from this guy and we learned about growing gourds and we grew gourds, we grew big piles of gourds and my husband says, I came home and she was making a lamp and that's just like the <laughs> end of the, like that's how, that was the beginning of the story. That's how Gourdlandia started basically. Exactly. Well, I just, I think there's something really fun that you were like a midwife before and then you have these gourds that they, they almost look pregnant. They're pregnant with seeds, right? So people ask me all the time, how did, what got you into gourds? And there's a lot of different angles to that story. And one time somebody was asking me and I said, well, for some reason I started out with, well, I was a midwife and she said, stop right there. Uh, I don't, you don't have to go any further. I know the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> because I think you're right. Like they have yeah. bellies and they're full, yeah. they're full of fertility. Yeah. You did stuff as a kid, but you had never crafted like this before. So you just went on your own and just started to play around and mm -hmm. develop that love for the gourd and then you stuck with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing is like all of these different skills that I had obtained just from a lifetime of dabbling mm -hmm. just kind of came together in gourds and and most gourd artists are self-taught, like, mm -hmm. you know, but it, I feel like that that's like you can do so much with them. You can go in so many different directions. So let me ask you a question. You delivered 1,100 babies. How many gourds have you developed? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. How many lamps? Have I? Yeah. Or, yeah, not 1,100 lamps. But certainly, I bet it's, I bet 1,100. If you talk about like pieces of gourd art, it's probably in that neighborhood. Yeah. Well, oh, this is great. Thank you so much. I wish I had had more, like, like I guess the things are just, it's hard to keep this shelf stuck, which I is mean, the she problem can't, that she, any The gourds are flying wants. off the shelf. It's, it's, it's the problem every artist wants to have, but it's a little bit of a problem. Yeah. I come back in January, then <laughs> it'll be stuck.